Hello everyone, tonight I'm working on the 135i. Uh, surprise, surprise, people thought the car was dead, but no. Uh, it's just summer times, so we're taking a break. And um, what better time than while taking a break to kind of get some more work done on the car in between track season. So obviously, as you can see behind me, I managed to uh, splurge for once, usually I'm a real cheapskate. I splurged and bought a um, StopTech ST60 big brake kit for the front of the car. And today I wanted to kind of walk you through my initial impressions of the kit and a few things you should probably know before you buy or while you're trying to assemble this kit. So let's jump right into it. Obviously I installed this, sorry I did not film the DIY, my bad, but it's very straightforward. So I just wanted to kind of show you a few things, kind of talk through the kit. Sorry, it's dark out, let me try and get some light in here. Okay, so as you can see, the StopTech ST60 kit, it, it obviously includes these massive front rotors and the large calipers, as well as stainless steel brake lines back there. You can see I'm bleeding the brakes right now. We're in the process of doing that. Anyway, so let's jump right into it. So you see what the kit has. Let's talk about why you'd want to upgrade your brakes. Obviously, these are much larger than the stock 135i brakes, but you may be saying to yourself, the car, the 135i comes with a big brake kit from the factory. It comes with six piston calipers and vented rotors. What's the deal? Well, that hardware looks great on paper, but the problem is it's still made to a price point. It's still made to be for a regular day-to-day -day street car. So obviously when you take your car to the track, you might run into issues like I have. I've um, blown out the calipers and had to rebuild them with stainless steel pistons, and I've been destroying rotors and brake pads like no other. So I got sick of it, and also I forgot to mention I've been boiling brake fluid like no other, even with ducting. So I decided to bite the bullet and get the big brake kit. So let's talk about the hardware. As I mentioned, it comes with much larger rotors. Obviously they're larger in diameter. You have to run an 18 inch wheel to clear these. 17s will not fit over the ST60 kit. So not only are they much larger in diameter and a true two piece rotor, separate hub and rotor assembly, BMW rotors are kind of a faux two piece of sorts, but obviously the, the larger diameter is great, but the biggest thing here is you're paying for the thickness of the rotors. Look how massive these things are. So not only are the rotors much thicker, they also have much larger venting, which means they can evacuate more heat. So while the bigger rotor in height and thickness means the rotors can handle more heat, the bigger vents mean they can, mean they can evacuate that heat and keep the rotors cooler for longer, meaning your rotors last longer and your brake pads last longer. Okay, so I wanted to give you a visual representation of the difference in size between the hardware we're working with here. So this is the ST60 OEM rotor, or the ST60 kit rotor, and this is an OEM 135i rotor. rotor. As you can see, it's kind of a faux two-piece design with a hub and a semi-floating disc, and it is vented. But let's look at the difference in size. So, it's really heavy. The ST60 rotors are a little bit less than an inch taller in diameter, but that's great, but the big difference is obviously the thickness of the rotors. If you look here, the OEM design is vented, but compared to this, it's just not even close. I think these are six or seven millimeters wider, which is a huge difference when you factor in the overall size and thermal capacity of the rotors. And like the rotors, here are the calipers. The OEM 1 series brake calipers look nice on paper. They're a six piston design made by Brembo, but obviously, you look at them at first glance, you know, obviously they're bigger, but how much is how much of a difference is there really? Look at them like this, and you start to see the difference in size and in thermal capacity as a result. And obviously, the 1 Series brake calipers, they have a very narrow bridge design. That means the brake pads can't be that thick, and there's just less thermal capacity here inside this caliper, versus this ST60. Nice wide bridge, which means you can fit really fat brake pads and they have a lot of thermal capacity. So that's the rotors and the calipers. You may be wondering about the brake pads. Uh, one series brake pads are bespoke to this caliper design. They don't come on any other car. So obviously brake pads are very expensive for that caliper. ST60s are generic. Any, any ST60 pad will fit an ST60 caliper. So you have a pretty big selection. And although it is, they are kind of more generic in a sense. They're not really much cheaper just because it is a big brake kit and they are very big brake pads. But still, you do have a generally a larger selection for the StopTech calipers since they're kind of generic versus the 1 Series calipers. And that's kind of the initial hardware differences. Uh, I'm going to kind of go into the basic installation, kind of give you a few tips there. Okay, so I mentioned before I did not film the DIY install for installing the big brake kit. It's very, very straightforward. I'll give you a quick walkthrough right now. So, let me pull off this slip-on spacer, if I can. My gloves are covered in brake fluid. 
Okay, so the stop tech rotors are obviously made for a 5120 BMW bolt pattern and they fit the right hub size. Also nice is that they use the OEM BMW set screw right here. So it's on the rotor, it's just a matter of putting the rotor on the hub, putting the set screw to hold it in place. Uh, as far as the calipers, again, very similar to the OEM in concept. It's a bolt-on design. So let's go back to the OEM 1 series calipers for a second. Basically, God, these things are heavy, man. Stop texts are way lighter. All right, so here is your OEM 135i caliper. And on the back, you see they have the bolt holes here and here and back here those bolt on to this bracket this bracket basically fits onto the caliper and bolts it on to the hub assembly the stop tech works in a very similar way they have a stop tech bracket that adapts this caliper to the oem bmw wheel hub assembly let's jump onto the car and i'll show you that right now all right so hopefully that's a decent angle um, this is the back of the caliper uh, there is a bracket right back here which basically adapts the caliper onto the wheel hub assembly. Basically use two bolts to bolt the bracket onto the hub. And then there are two bolts that stick out of that caliper adapter right here that you use to bolt the caliper to the adapter and then your caliper is mounted. Um, this obviously looks pretty straightforward. I think, I think these are 13 or 14 mil fasteners. Uh, the only problem I ran into with this kit, the entire process was very straightforward except for this. Um, if you actually look this bracket's very smartly designed, very simple, very elegant. Uh, these fasteners look simple and straightforward, but you see there's a little recess in the caliper right here, designed so you can fit a socket right here and uh, fasten down this nut. The problem is this recess is not quite large enough to fit any of my conventional sockets I had. So I had an issue at first where I actually almost rounded off one of these nuts because I thought I had the socket dead on but this recess in the caliper wasn't big enough as causing the socket to sit a little bit crooked on here. Eventually, I just ended up filing down a socket to make it a little bit thinner walled to fit this recess. That's something to keep in mind when you're installing this, you need to have a specialty thin wall socket to do this properly. Kind of an annoying thing, but it was a quick setback, got it figured out. Uh, coming along, sorry, continuing on along. The brake lines are very conventional. Uh, they bolt onto the OEM hard line right here. It's a stainless steel line, and they provide these little two rubber gaskets to fit in the OEM location to hold the brake line in place. And then there's a banjo bolt back here that bolts to the caliper. All really conventional stuff. So again, that's basically the entire assembly process. Very straightforward, very easy, with the exception of these fasteners. Kind of annoying, but a minor setback at best. All right, so you may be wondering, how do I service the brake pads on these calipers? Well, StopTech couldn't have not have made it any easier. You see these four hex head fasteners right here? These use a five millimeter hex. You unscrew these, pull them out, and this bridge pops out completely. You see there are little anti-rattle clips and tensioners right here against this bridge. Unbolt this, the bridge springs off, and there are your brake pads. Just slide them in and out. These brake pads, these are PFC performance friction brakes. They actually have little hooks right here for you to just grab on and pull them out. Very simple, again, very straightforward. These are only at like 18 pound foot of torque. So very simple, just carry a five mil hex. The bridge pops out and then you can access your brake pads and reassembly is obviously the exact same. Pads just slide in, hold the bridge up, bolt it through, and then you're done. Easy peasy. Uh, I wanna talk about the calipers for a little bit longer. So I've covered the basics of assembly Pretty straightforward, very easy to understand. I didn't really look at the instructions, I didn't really need to, it kind of just self-explanatory. Uh, going back to the calipers, obviously we need to talk about brake fluid now. OEM calipers, again, are kind of a compromise here because they're made for OEM service lives, OEM intervals, and kind of general indifference to maintenance. With a race caliper, you're obviously bleeding your brake fluid pretty regularly and you know, looking to get the best performance out of this and really want to get all the air bubbles out because obviously that leads to a nice stiff brake pedal. Uh, StopTech did a good job here. The bleeders are facing directly upwards, which is where all the air wants to go in the system. Air goes up, which is smart. So bleeders facing directly up, and you notice there are two, one here and one here. That's a smart idea. Dual bleeders make for a little bit more work when you're bleeding the brake fluid, but it basically means that there's no trapped air back here or back here, because you can just crack open that bleeder and all the air will go back out. So that was a pretty quick walkthrough of the StopTech ST60 Big Brake Kit. I think I covered everything. If I did not, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Uh, 
Yeah, quick recap. You need 18 inch wheels to fit these because they are massive. Obviously the rotors are much thicker and larger for much better cooling. And the dual uh, bleeder caliper makes for smarter brake fluid changes and pad changes are very easy. Obviously, I've not really driven this yet. I've kind of just put it on the car and driven around the block. Uh, check back in in a couple months when it's track day season. I'll give you a full track day update on these. But around town, it feels just like the OEM braking system. But obviously, it looks much cooler. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. And I'll do my best to answer it. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention. Uh, so I finished bleeding the brakes with the stop tech calipers and I ran into a small issue where I was driving a little bit quicker than I was before I initially installed them and I heard a cyclical sort of metallic -y rubbing sound. Uh, I quickly found out what that was. Uh, when I mentioned that the brakes in this car are much larger than stock, need 18s to make them fit, I wasn't kidding. Uh, it turns out I'm actually rubbing on the wheel weights inside the barrel of the wheel against the caliper. Here, let me show you a quick uh, what that video of what that looks like. So if you look here, you can see that I have wheel weights on the outside part of the barrel, the wheel near the spoke. And when the wheel is turning, it actually was fouling against the caliper right here ever so slightly, causing that sort of metallic whir sound. So I ended up taking some 220 grit sandpaper to the wheel weights and just filing them down ever so gently. You can see where the kind of script on the wheel weights kind of filed down a little bit. And that was all it takes uh, to make it clear. But that just shows you how big the uh, StopTech ST60 kit is. So something to keep in mind, again, even with 18-inch wheels, I guess clearances are that tight. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. All right, bye.